Today I was offered an interesting massage challenge in the form of a massage emergency, which many people might laugh at. Um, but when your sacrum is out of position and your back is in full spasm, it becomes, um, to the person it's, it's happening to, it becomes more than an emergency. It becomes a life-altering event. And when something like this happens to one of your patients, do you feel prepared or equipped to handle their situation, their pain, to get them out of pain, to help them through this pain crisis that they're going through, and to see them through to the other side. Um, how comfortable are you dealing with very, very acute pain situations? Integrated Touch Education Services could possibly prepare you to deal more efficiently, more successfully with some of these particular situations that might occur. Everybody does something and pulls a muscle and strains something at one point in their life or another. How you choose to resolve these issues is very, very heavily based on experience. Do you call the doctor? Do you go to the emergency room? Do you call your massage therapist or your chiropractor? Who do you, who's your go-to person when you're in pain? Um, personally, I don't have insurance right now. I don't have health insurance right now. So a trip to the emergency room with a potential broken bone or strained muscle or something like that could cost me anywhere from ten to forty thousand dollars to go to the emergency room to have something like that checked out and treated fully. Um, I'm not prepared to do that. So my go-to person on my list of what to do when something happens is first of all I need to be able to know that my competent health professionals are going to be able to deal with this and deal with it in a way that's not going to cost me ten to forty thousand dollars. So um, I have a chiropractor who's very good at what he does, I have a doctor who's very good at what she does, but I also have massage therapists who are extremely good at what they do. They're extremely good at what they do because I've taught them. And that may sound a little arrogant, and I'm sorry if it does, but the reality is is that I have no insurance. I have a very physical job with very physical demands, and I have very, very specific needs. And when I'm at a commission, I'm not earning money for my household. So. I need someone who can do what I need them to do, which is to get me back to work. How comfortable are you with that? Can you help your patients? Can you keep them working? Can you get them out of a crisis situation into back to my regular life situation? When you're choosing your continuing education, this might be a question you want to ask yourself. What's going to help me and help my patients the most? Is it going to be a class on a shiatsu massage? Is it going to be a class on HIPAA? which may be required for me to take, so yeah, it could potentially benefit them, or insurance billing could potentially benefit them, business practices that make me stronger could potentially benefit them. Is it going to be something that's very treatment oriented and it's going to give me a better skill set to deal with a, an acute type injury? Is it going to make me more confident with things like that? Those are the choices that I consider when I'm looking at what I, what I have to do for my state required 24 hours every two years or my one hour a month. When you think about it as one hour a month, it doesn't seem like a lot of time. When you think about it of 24 hours of continuing education you have to submit with your license, then it becomes at least a weekend out of your life, if not longer. So make your choices wisely. Make it be something that is very um, beneficial to you and to your patients because those are the people that you serve. Maybe a more clinical toolbox might be a lot more beneficial to working people than a relaxation toolbox. How do you want to stock your toolbox? Um, techniques that treat conditions that arise from people who work hard, um, helping people relax after a stressed out day, listening to a bunch of yappy small dogs in the background all day long could be very nerve wracking. Um, what, are, what are the issues that motivate this person to come to you? Are they because I need to go to work? I need this massage to make sure I can keep functioning? Or I've just had a bad week and I'm stressed out? What's going to help you more? What's going to benefit you more as a practitioner? What's going to make you a better massage therapist to make you more fulfilled? Do you want to relax people? Do you want to heal people? Where do you want to go from here? Those are the questions you need to ask yourself when choosing your continuing education. Where do I want to go from here? What kind of massage therapist do I want to be?